Hello, hello. <clears throat> I'm back to my phone. My Comcast is out, so <clears throat> some things, if I want to get something up to you, I got to do it by, my, by hand, by my telephone. This bugs is terrible, you know. If you hear pops, ow, you know, I don't feel good when I get a hold of one of my hairs. Ow, that wasn't me. That was one of them. Thank God. But anyways... You guys, I forgot to talk about something else about that jargon with the Jewish people and what it means. <clears throat> what things mean when it comes down to the phrases that are made. Like, I used to always, you know, I was one of these guys that um, I, when I went to church, I just wanted to be with my own clothes, just regular clothes. And of course, everyone else in this church was always dressed up, and I used to kind of feel kind of funny. But you know, I did. I used to live on a boat, and I just wasn't always that. I had long hair, and unkept, and everything like that. And I didn't want to change or anything. I painted Jesus walking on the water, and they told me that that looks like you. You painted you, you know. So directly after that, and it's been over 25, 30 years, you'll see it. It's in one of those past things about the, about my church here. It's in a video. But it had super long hair, super long hair. And they said that I looked a lot like Jesus. I thought I'd like to be unlike Jesus, you know. Queer, queer Jesus. <clears throat> well, anyway, who knows? Um... <clears throat> You know our Bible, you know our Bible. <clears throat> our Bible was uh, put together by King James. And um, I heard about it through um, this place called Hidden Hidden Meanings by Bill Donahue. And, uh, and I went and looked it all up myself. <clears throat> and I'll be damned if it weren't true. And you know, they there's still a controversy because someone said something that's always like oh well this side said oh that never happened you know and he had children you know oh, he has he was married he was married well you know his queerness was when he was 12 or 13 before he was ever married you know made to marry anyways what we call that in this where we call him better latent than never you know well if he wasn't latent he was queer queers all going on he had a he had an older man he had an affair with an older man and uh that went on for like 13 or 14 years that's a that's longer than any relationship i ever had you know just the way it is I never really could give in to somebody me having to serve them constantly and that's all they wanted you know i was always doing things for them for the for the good of mankind you know working for um, an agency that worked for people with handicaps and their needs were important you know mine mine weren't you know and so anything that got in between psh, the hell out of here don't bother me you know plus I always want to be an artist and anything got in the way of that you know get out of here but anyways before I get off track and I don't know how much time I have on this computer thing Render your hearts and not your garments. That's the that's the longer version to when uh, when God commanded the Jewish people that whenever they wished to talk to Him, when they were looking, you know, to you know to repent or to turn about or to uh, to uh, this idea of fasting and stuff like that, that uh, when someone dies and something happens that they rip their clothing, that they rip their their clothing. And uh, of course, whenever they say to render your heart and not your garments, it doesn't have anything to do with your outside clothing. But we do know now, if you've been following me and in these these things, that but that that jargon is is our skin, our skin is our garment, and uh, when we wash, when they call it washing, when we wash, we are no longer in our skin. We have cleaned our skin. We have washed our feet, so we can go over into this zone to get this water between us and the this outside world is our barrier. 
that uh, it's so what you're doing is it's an inside thing so this is why your heart is a very important part of it that you render your heart render what's inside of you not what's out of side of you you know so this is the idea of giving that little 10 percent of you over here to to him we don't want the other 90 percent you know just that little bit that belongs to me you know and that's what he says. That's what bring give to me what is mine. What is Caesar's is Caesar. Caesar's is an outside situation. So when the Jewish people rent their clothing, you know, it's this you they said the discipline, you know, because then they go into fasting and stuff like that. But this discipline is overdone. It, it, it's almost like why don't they just go and like, you know jump off the roof, you know, get it over with. You know, go, go wailing. You know, that's what these people do. You know, this is what they understand by not being able to read. Oh, oh, God told me this. This I read this. You know, but rendering your garments. You know, get rid. Not render your garments. Remember your heart. You know, so you're getting rid of your garments. So they're tearing the garment. That means to separate. You know, so that's what you and I do. You know, we know that Moses and Aaron, Moses and Aaron were, you know, Moses w was, was the guy, Aaron was the one that did all that. Hey, hey, uh, Jesus would speak to G to Moses, Moses, tell Aaron to hold his hand out and uh, take that staff of his and whack water with that and a bunch of frogs will show up, you know. Hey, Moses, I want you to tell Aaron to raise his arm and do this, you know, so... <laughs> It's a very interesting little play, but all of this is happening right here inside of you. There's not two or three people there. It's just you. And so that's your neighbor. Jesus says you've got to learn to love your neighbor as yourself. And you just understand that the stories, when you start seeing them or hearing them in this different, beautiful things happen to you. And I hope you understand this because... It's just so cool as hell. It's absolutely cool as hell. I woke up this morning saying, rent, rent your clothes, you know, and I said, I don't think I said anything about that. We talked about the sackcloth and we talked about the ashes, you know, this is the going into the darkness, you know, and when, and it's the same kind of, the, uh, the sun went to darkness, you know, and the, the moon turned to red or, you know, and the sackcloth, blah, 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 you know, listen. This is just another vision or view of how this was going to happen. Another bit of the jargon. And there's so many stories, you know, that, uh, you know, it's just crazy. You know, we find that it's uh, Zen, it's uh, Heaven, it's uh, Nirvana, it's Jerusalem, it's uh, it's uh, a state of mind would be Israel, you know balanced everything being in harmony with itself and that this being the way how you do it that you go in there render your heart and not your garments all right you know i mean that may have brought people into the church that was a little little less ugly or a little less pretty you know and stuff like that but they did look funny at you like that and just was made like you didn't care it didn't matter you came into this into god's house looking like shit well listen you know they don't have an idea of what god would have been if he was real you know running around with sheep and stuff like that you know and hanging out in the worst of places you know and smelly places and the stinky places and with lots of sin and going down and stuff like that hell yeah he'd be fishing in the worst of places just like me but you know I have this internet between me and all these people that would probably would like to slap me, you know. Some, even older women and older men would like to take me to the woodshed and for me to have a mouth like mine and to talk to Jesus like this, you know. But you know what, you know, I do it sometimes. My mom, my grandma used to whoop us when we was kids and we laugh but she'd whoop us. Cause it was, but we loved, she really thought she was doing some good, but you know, one time she had me in one hand and my brother in another hand, and we were getting in trouble for for coloring on the walls with with uh with crayons and stuff like that. So 
It had this little bitty house in Missouri, and, this little, and it had a skinny, a real long, skinny hallway with all the rooms on each side with the bathroom down at the end. And she had one of us in one hand, or one in the other, and was running with us to our room to put us in the in the bed. And we had our we marked with the marker all the way down the ways, you know. So, and we just giggled and laughed. But when she would whoop us, we would just laugh. It was just, you know, damn, we love it. But oh, mom and dad. There was no laughing. No laughing when mom and dad got all of this. this. I'm just being light with this because it's just so amazingly clear that, you know, the whole world, the whole world, this is a deception, you guys. You have to understand. You have to understand the severity of all of this stuff is that this is a giant deception. It absolutely is, you know. And I'm fearing a bit more like, not that we're uncovering anything like that, but the world itself is learning more more about itself. Oh, you know, each day it grows more and more and more. And this distrust with the government and whoever was the winner, you know, believing and hoping for the truth of these particular people, you know, and realizing, oh, no. You know, you wonder, <clears throat> damn, maybe we shouldn't have taken that pill, you know, probably wouldn't hurt at all. Because a whole mess of people is not eating that pill. They don't even know they have that pill. A lot of people don't know they have a choice. Nobody knows that, you know. They think that that's your choice is between the atheist, you know, or being a believer in Jesus. You know, both, both of those people who believe in Jesus and are waiting for him to come, those believers that are missing him, you know, the ones that are detached from God and this kingdom, don't believe it's in them. Look outside, look all around for him, still can't find him, even though the Bible tells you about where he is, you know, all the time. Mm -mm. Dumbass idiots, you know, that's, if we can't, what he's, what? What? Ow, god damn. But anyways, they're all living a myth. It's like those guys went from, you know, Somebody told them. Somebody told them, We're good. this is your faith, and you got to do this. And there'll be no working on Sundays. Every seventh year, you'll get to do this, and you can take this and that, and you can just read that Bible and say that it is life and truth and history, and go for it. And those same people were the same Magi's. Some people that supposedly found baby Jesus, too. So can you see how this Abraham thing is starting to set up in some way? It's just weird. Just weird. It says it in the Bible, you know, up around Ezra and stuff like that. It talks about this Persian king Cyrus and how he was told by his God to rebuild this temple for the Jews. They're the one for Solomon's temple. This is the whole thing. If there's anybody real, it would be these guys. Talk about Ezra rewriting the book of Moses, and uh, this King Artaxerxes was going to help enforce this on Jerusalem and on the Jews. They, re they reportedly, you know, during the time of Babylon, uh, educated these guys and set them on their path. And there's a bunch of Zoroastrian people. And they were Persian, Persian, and they had a whole different god called an Ahura Mazda. So this is a a whole different, there's not Jehovah, there's a whole nother God, a whole nother God when there's only one God, you guys, only one God, but here's a, a whole nother God from uh, from 2,000 or so years or more before, saying, you know what, you need to build that temple for those Jewish people, right, and then sometime later introduced Christianity, and then uh, once, you know, once the plot thickens, you know, let's throw in the red hair and, and here comes, here comes Islam. The only real person in this group is that guy, that Muhammad guy. And he claims to not be anything. He was just in a, in some cave one day and whatever it was about, you know, he thought he'd talk to God, you know, and, and he had everything going, and next thing you know, you know, he has an army behind him, and a whole town that says, I'll believe in Allah, and uh, they would fall, go through, you know, 
winning after now attributing everything to Allah. Everything was Allah, you know, and this is just a just a fabricated, bastardized religious group. You know, there's a bunch of I believe it all came from the same place. And all three of these guys are 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 topping Buddha and Krishna and all the other gods out there. All of them. And you know, when you do a little bit of research like I've been doing when I show them here, is that, uh, you know, the guys that are doing Islam, that's, got, that's the devil, there's Satan. It's all about that cube, that Saturn. I'm not kidding. Uh, same way with Judaism, Judaism. They even use Saturday as their Sabbath. I mean, goddamn shit, fire, man. That's just crazy shit. And, you know, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I've done a, my time. I've put my time in, you know. Uh, even then, they'd probably say I was some kind of an unorthodox type of preacher because of the, my mode of operandi uh, may not be something that they'd like to listen to. But I would tell, I used to tell good Jesus stories. I used to tell them really good. Now I kind of laugh at them and make, God damn it, Rick, why did you do that? You know, but I'll never stop uh, worrying. I loved all that time I put into it. I put a lot of time into it. I'm glad I did. It's, it's, it's more than, it's just me, me like art is. It's really cool. So anyways, I'm, um, going to let you go, but I just thought that it would be really cool to tell you about those ideas that, you know, we have to give up our skin, the ideas, you, you give it up, render your heart, not to your garments, this idea of when people eat and it goes to their belly and then out the pooper, that this shows you it misses the heart, you know, this is the idea that, who, the, who is this I see uh, on the right hand of the Father sitting on the throne? He has this, uh, something that's running up the back side, you know, sealed with seven seals, the, you know, the lamb skin book of life, you know, do you have this in your life? Or you, do you go up there, do you see your Paul every now and then? Do you go up there and catch a glimpse of your mom and dad and hang out with them for a little while? Is this your way? Is this your way? That's how easy it is. Just that easy. Well, anyways, I uh, hope the best for you guys. I love you all. And, um, you know, break out of this. Break out of this myth with me. And uh, let's let's see what happens. Let's, let's, let's see, you know, maybe we can make some changes in this, you know. Or, you know, with me, we could talk about some other stuff that's just, you know, now that your mind's free of garbage, you know. You know, makes you know, we become those watchers or something like that. We have a whole lot to talk about, you know. Anyways, uh, I'll chat with you soon. I love you. Take care.